This is the PS5 Slim that is 30% smaller than the original PS5. It has both design and some hardware changes from the original PS5. And now with the PS5 Pro on the horizon, should you buy the Slim version or should you hold off? We'll cover everything about the PS5 Slim in this video to give you guys a better idea. Hi guys, my name is Manny Rital, and today we'll be looking at the long-term review of the PS5 Slim. We'll be looking at the performance, the specs, and the gameplay, and everything else you should consider before purchasing this console. And if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button if you want to stay on top of all the new tech and gaming videos. I post videos on a weekly basis. So let's jump straight into it by talking about the design changes. Now the PS5 Slim, just like the name implies, is about 30% smaller than the original PS5. Now the PS5 Slim was released late in 2023, and the original PS5 was released in 2020. And as of right now, Sony has discontinued the original PS5. You can only purchase brand new PS5 Slims and disc versions. If you want an older console, you will have to purchase it secondhand off of eBay or off somebody that you may know. Now, in terms of the aesthetics, there are some noticeable differences. One being that the front and back plates are now divided into two and they have a shiny finish and they aren't matte like the original. I will say that these plates are much easier to remove and replace than the original PS5. So you have easier access to your disc drive, the expansion drive, as well as cleaning your PS5 to keep it cool and running in the long run. Now, a huge upgrade that the PS5 Slim over the PS5 is that the disc drive is now removable and expandable. So that means if you decide to opt out and buy the PS5 Slim digital only version, you can buy the disc drive separately and expand it at any time you'd like. The original PS5 did not have this option. Now, in terms of ports, there have been some changes as well. The front now comes equipped with two USB-C ports where the original only had one USB-C and one USB 3.0. And I want to say the best change and probably the simplest change is the relocation of the eject button if you decide to get the disc version. So the original PS5 had both of them together and the markings were quite small and it was always difficult to understand which one was the right button, whether you're powering off or ejecting. Now the eject button is placed directly on the disc drive itself. So you don't have to worry about accidentally turning off your PS5 when you're removing or inserting discs. Now, of course, you can have a new console without some controversy. And the biggest controversial thing about the PS5 Slim is that it did not come with a stand. So if you want to stand up your PS5 vertically, then you have to purchase a stand from Sony directly. It does not come included with the box. However, if you want to place it horizontally, it does come with two legs that a lot of people seem to misplace or not know that they're actually there. And I actually recommend placing your PS5 Slim horizontally and we'll talk about more as to why you should do that later in this video. Now let's jump into the gaming and performance of the PS5 Slim and it is identical to the original PS5. It has the same internal components like the same video card and the same amount of memory. So whether you're playing on the PS5 or the PS5 Slim you will not see any changes in performance and the gaming is phenomenal. If you have a TV that supports up to 120 Hertz you can play games at 4k at 120 Hertz and it looks amazing. Now, most games do come with the option of fidelity mode where you are playing for the visual experience and not so much for the frame rate, but it also comes in performance mode as well. The most common game being Spider-Man and you can flip around depending on what your preference is. All in all, I haven't had any issues with gaming and stuttering with frame rate while playing on the PS5 Slim, nor did I have any issues with the original PS5. I wanna say that in terms of performance and reliability, PlayStation and Sony has really hit it out of the park. I've had some issues with my Xbox Series X where certain games did stutter, but with the PS5 for the most part, if it's advertised at 60 FPS, then I got 60 FPS pretty much consistently with very minor frame drops. New games, AAA games from the original launch up until 2024 all play amazing on the PS5 Slim. So if that was a concern of yours that the gameplay might not be the same or it might be a drop in performance, then you don't have to worry about that with the PS5 Slim, either disc or digital version. Now, the other benefit of the PS5 Slim with the disc version is that you can play older generation games like the PS4 directly by inserting the disc into the drive. It'll copy the game and then you'll be able to play it. Now, there are issues with PS3. PS3 games and PS2 games, as well as the original PS1, are not backwards compatible in terms of disc but you can access all those games on the PlayStation Network and download them. Now, this is very critical because I have a pretty expansive storage and library of PS4 games, and I like to replay them time to time. And I wanna say that the performance is a lot better playing those games on the PS5 than I did on the original PS4. 
So if you do have a lot of PS4 games, you're a Sony person and you're upgrading, then the PS5 Slim with the disc version is probably the best route for you to go with. Now, someone who owns the Xbox Series X, I do say I was a little bit disappointed in Sony because on the Xbox Series X in terms of backwards compatibility, you can play the original Xbox games by simply inserting the disc. It's really cool that Xbox decided to honor all of the previous generations of consoles and allow people to still play the games. Now, I know this is a limitation for the PS3 as well as the PS4 in terms of all generation compatibility, but I really did wish that Sony could have implemented that with the PS5 Slim. Unfortunately, they did not. Now, you can't talk about performance without talking about the thermal cooling of the PlayStation. Now, as I said, this is the exact same components of the original PS5 slimmed down into a smaller form factor. And that means you will be generating a lot more heat when playing video games. Now, I want to say that there have been a lot of issues and concerns floating around that the PS5 is overheating. But in my testing and as my performance experience, I've had none of those issues. I've actually done an external temperature test on the PS5 Slim and it gets to about 40 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is fairly common and not a red flag at all. My recommendations, if you want to keep your PS5 Slim running cool, place it horizontally so all the intake and outtake fans are unobstructed. Also keep it at least 30 centimeters to about a foot and a half away from any near surface so you get constant airflow coming in. And my other recommendation is every six months, pop out the plate covers and clean out the fans and make sure there's not a lot of dust because as dust builds up, that's where you get heating and performance issues. So you follow those steps in the long run, you should have no issues with overheating on your PS5. I've played five, six, seven hours consecutively with the PS5 and while the exterior body did get a little hot, I've had no issues with drop performance in frame rate or anything like that. Now, in terms of actual storage on the PS5 Slim, this is where the upgrades really come. The original PS5 only had an 825 gigabyte drive where only 667 gigabytes were usable. Here, you now have a terabit drive where about 825 to 848 gigabytes is actually usable. So about 150 gigabytes more storage. Now, the good thing is you still get an expandable NVMe slot in your PS5 so you can expand your storage when you like. All you need is an M.2 drive, simply pop it in and it will format. And now you can save all your games onto that drive itself. The only thing is you have to make sure that the read speeds on that drive are at least 5,000 megabytes a second. So while you do have the luxury of buying any NVMe, you don't have to buy a Sony licensed product. You do have to be conscious of the read and write speeds, specifically the read speeds on that drive. Expanding it's very easy. I actually made a video of it. I'll link it in the description. It can be done in under three minutes. Super, super easy. The user interface for the PS5 Slim remains unchanged. As a matter of fact, it's exactly the same as the original PS5 and you still get the same updates for both consoles. Also, the DualSense controller remains as is identical to the original PS5 and I have no issues with it. The haptic feedback and the triggers on the L2 and R2 buttons on the PS5 makes it one of the coolest and probably my favorite features of any controller. I am an Xbox guy when it comes to the preference for an Xbox controller, but I have no issues with the PS5 DualSense controller as well. And depending on which package you get when purchasing the PS5, some of them do come included with two controllers, which is a added bonus and pretty cool. Now the PS5 Slim with the disc version is also a great multimedia streaming device, the digital one as well. But if you get the one with the disc, you can use it to play your Blu-ray movies and shows as well as DVDs. So if you do have an extensive library sitting at home and you want to watch older movies, or if you want to continue to buy Blu-rays, they are compatible with the PS5 Slim. Now for the pricing of the PS5 Slim, the disc version comes in at $500 USD and the digital version comes at 450 USD. Now, if you're thinking of buying something that's cheaper, which is the digital version, and you want to expand to the disk drive in the future, remember that the external disk drive costs $80. So if you plan on saving money up front, you will, but you will end up paying more in the long run if you eventually want to go with physical media. So at that point, my recommendation is just purchase the PS5 Slim with the disk version already installed. Now, competitively, the Xbox Series X also comes at $500 USD, and that also comes with one terabyte of storage. Now, at that point, this is where it's strictly your preference. Do you want to play Xbox games or do you want to play PS5 games? Now, other thing to consider is that the PS5 Pro was recently announced and will be launching in November, but the rumored price for that is $700 USD. 
where in my personal opinion, the PS5 Slim and the original PS5 are playing games phenomenally as is. So if you do want to consider that route, I would hold off and just purchase the PS5 Pro. But like I said, the PS5 Slim has not given me any issues in terms of overheating or gaming. So you can save $200 off the top right there. And another thing to consider is just like the original launch of the PS5, the PS5 Pro more than likely will come with supply chain issues. So getting it at launch might be difficult. So if you want to jump into gaming immediately and you want to start gaming, take that into consideration because it might be a while before you can even get your hands on that. And that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got some information. Let me know if you'll be purchasing a PS5 Slim or if you're going to be waiting for the PS5 Pro or if you're not purchasing at all. Leave it in the comments. And like I said, if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and like this video if you liked it. But until next time, I'll see you guys around. Peace.